What's up, everybody? I hold shift here, and, uh, well, I have a confession to make. I have been meaning to put this guide out for, well, far too long. There's actually, this guide was supposed to come out before the assassin guide, as you will notice that most of these clips of the warrior gameplay you're about to see are very old, but regardless, we're here, we're doing the thing. This is the 10 tips in five minutes on the warrior, and I have to just first and foremost start things off by saying, People who think the warrior is no longer viable because of his heroic leap charge, I think are very much so undervaluing what the warrior is able to do. Not only by himself, but also in a team environment. We'll break down each of those things as we go through, but this should be hopefully a, a nice quick hit guide. It's showing off some of the basics, how to survive, how to play, and how to maybe get a couple of wins on the warrior if you're having some struggles doing so. And again, just as a caveat again, these are some older clips, so you'll notice some things that aren't exactly up to date. But still, the mindset and the ideas will be the same. Get wrecked, idiot. Here we go. Coming right back in, we've got 10 tips in five minutes for the warrior. Number one, setting up your kit. Your ideal setup will consist of high rarities of shielding flask, charge, and of course, leap. Weapon-wise, I want a long-range weapon like the slug rifle and something close-range like the axe or a burst rifle. I currently prefer the burst over the axe simply because of the constant DPS. I can headshot with it, and crafting the axe just takes up a lot of forge time and shards. That being said, the axe is still a viable option at close range if you don't have better options and find yourself rolling in shards early. The abilities, I would say, are less forgiving simply because the strength of the warrior comes with his ability to shield, providing a huge buffer of extra HP in the beginning and middle of fights, as well as he's one of the only classes with double mobility, which pays off huge dividends when it comes to pushing, retreating, or helping other teammates quickly. Number 2. Forge Priority when it comes to forging, you'll typically be trying to get an armor, ability, and potions in one swoop. However, if I feel confident in my armor and abilities and not so great about my weapons, I will sometimes craft my axe first if I have the resources. Conversely, if I feel decent about my weapons, I'll be sure to always go with the armor ability route first. Number three, using your shield. The Shielding Flask is probably one of the better items in the game when it comes to being able to sustain somebody right in your face. The only thing that could really be better is, of course, the Engineer Barricade. You can see, though, a number of times as I'm getting into these fights, just by throwing down that shield, it allows you to soak up some extra damage and keep you in the fight a little longer. Again, this warrior wants to charge on in. I shield beforehand. He only gets me once, but regardless, it's not going to make a difference. Also, be sure to shield before you take long-range poke battles to ensure you stay safe while finding chip damage. Number four, netting some gains. The net shot's probably one of the more underutilized and I would say undervalued items and abilities in the game, and there's very good reason why. However, if you find yourself stuck with the gold net shot, it can be very good at peeling for your teammates and, of course, keeping people pretty much plugged into one position. The net shot's slow at legendary is extremely devastating and will at least allow you to get one, if not two, full shots off. So if you do roll it, you definitely can use it to be effective. It's not a priority, but it is still pretty good. Number five, make Pickett proud. Well, of course, we're talking about the charge. Pickett's charge, of course, you know, not exactly the best thing in the world, all you Civil War fans, but the charge can be used for a couple of reasons. Of course, to move distances, but also to deal damage. Don't forget that you can utilize the charge to deal damage to your opponents. Using that to kind of do a 180 and flip-flop your opponents to kind of keep them guessing where you've moved to can be very valuable. Also, notice how I'm using the shielding flask before I charge in at different times. Of course, your air control with the leap is not as good as it used to be, but using the charge to stay in your opponent's faces, especially when you have that axe, is extremely devastating. And again, don't be afraid to use it for that little bit of extra damage if you need to. Number six, when, where, how in regards to utilizing your jump. Yes, you can still utilize your jump indoors. Again, it does no longer deal damage, but you can utilize it to get in people's faces and kind of get that contest. On the flip side, if you find yourself getting poked out, utilize that leap with the charge. You can gain some increasingly long distance to move. Number seven, leapfrag. Not leapfrog, leapfrag. Remember the slug and crossbow at the time of this recording have perfect meter accuracy, and we want to use that to its fullest. Firing one of those in combination with your leap when committing to an engagement can add that little extra you need to secure a fight safely. It's not exactly easy to do, but it will come with practice, and the extra damage will pay off in your committal engagements. Oh, this also can work with the axe as well, but the axe isn't exactly perfectly accurate and might not secure you the damage you're looking for. Number 8. Managing your movement 
One of the worst things I see warriors do is utilize their charge and their leap at the same time every single time. You want to try to make sure you're utilizing your movement abilities to continue to be slippery in positioning against your opponents. Like here, if I were to have used my leap and my charge at the same time, I would not have been able to get to the high ground and then immediately punish this engineer. Number nine, pushing all in. Again, a lot of warriors will commit themselves very early into fights, and you gotta be careful about that because you still can get turned on. In this instance, I hit two early poke shots plus a leap frag shot just to make sure I can continue to commit to going all in. Same idea here. Poke your opponents first, find a way to get yourself to get in a position to where you can actually convert on a kill. If you're committing all in too soon without poking, you might be in a spot to where you are found a little bit caught off guard. So utilize that movement wisely, get your pokes, and find out where your opponent has moved to, and then when you feel like you have them soft enough, jump on in, finish them off for the kill. The last and probably hardest tip comes down to axe swapping. Yes, the quick weapon switches. You can do it best with a slug and an axe, but you can do it with multiple different types of weaponry that have slower DPS. Again, it works best with the slug because the DPS between the two really do kind of uh, feel very punishing. And again, you want to be trying to do this with either gold or purple gloves, specifically gold if you get the chance to. But again, like I mentioned, you can do it with any other weapon. And the reason for doing this is because the DPS of the axe alone, sure, it is great, but it can't have headshot. So if you find yourself with the frost axe specifically, if you toss the axe and then switch, you get again, like right there, the gold revolver does 1800 damage. That's the equivalent of two shots. So that's all I got for you guys today. Try to work those tips and tricks into your gameplay. Maybe you'll find some more success in the realm. And again, you utilize everything in the kit. There is no instance of the warrior that is bad. I didn't do anything on the healing flask because it's pretty self-explanatory. It's definitely good early game when it comes to keeping you sustained as you'll see in this engagement as it does get pretty long. Even the little bit of healing from the white is good enough to keep me alive. So don't feel like you, can ha you have to disenchant something because you don't get the ideal setup. You can make anything work at the warrior, which is why he's one of my favorite characters in the game. All of his abilities are viable at different points in the game. And really, to be honest, the healing flask and the shielding flask in duos and squads can really turn fights around. So even if you don't get good charge, it's not like you have to have one thing or the other. But that's going to do it for, here, uh, for me today, rather. My words are stumbling all over the place. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you want to get tips and tricks on the assassin, you can find that video in the links at the end of this one here. And until then, hopefully we'll catch you guys over on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash And if not, well, then next time, I hope that you keep holding it down.